So welcome everyone to this edition of ROV Meditation Practice Tips. And today, Stephen and I are gonna talk to the question, what does my graph mean? So that's a common question that we get in terms of meditation measured with EEG headsets. People that will send us graphs and say, tell me what that means. And so today we thought we'd go through and discuss some common brainwave patterns as they show up on Mind Monitor using the Muse EEG headset. And then we'll share um, a few of my graphs and show how those different patterns show up. And then we'll talk about how guided meditations can be a great tool to use with EEG to begin to track exactly what is happening at what moment in your meditation so you can really fine tune your practice. So Stephen's going to start out talking about eight different patterns that we've seen um, in Mind Monitor and using Muse with meditation. So Stephen, I'll pass it over to you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. And so I'm going to share uh, my screen immediately and just show you these brainwave patterns. Uh, so you can see these right here, uh, the eight patterns that Kevin and I have identified. And of course, there are more, but these are some primary ones that just may really help you as you're growing wisdom and insight and understanding your practice. So the very first one calm happiness shows that overriding delta so you can see so if you're not familiar with brain waves or the color coding on mind mind monitor uh, the red is delta the blue is alpha the purple is theta the green is beta and the um, gold down the bottom is gamma in this in the first um, diagram now a, a proviso here is that if you go and meditate in a sauna uh, you will notice that you will get really high delta as the, with the body heat, you will naturally notice a shift in brain waves and a shift actually in the way that it records it related to heat and not related necessarily to any depth of your practice. So just being aware that the, there are ocular artifacts, there are movement artif artifacts that occur. There are, so if you go right to the very last graph, you'll see, for example, the, the deep absorption and transcendent synchrony that we've identified can also be movement of the body. So there's a proviso here that things do occur in your practice. And when we get up to talking about the um, guidance and the relationship to the cues, it's, it's easy to test for this, right? You, you can go and meditate in a hot space and find out that you do indeed get increased delta and then do exactly the same meditation in another space, which is a cooler temperature. And if you still get in uh, high delta, then you'll know it's not just to do with the heat. And it's the same with movement. You can go and I would physically move so that you know what that looks like in your uh, graph. It's the same when people fall asleep. There is a pattern that shows up in their graph when you fall asleep. So these are actually good things to do because <laughs> you're learning about how these uh, artifacts or how these changes uh, show up in your graph. So it's really very, very useful. Um, so that means everything, the whole flow of life through our being is actually really informative. So the first one, the overriding delta is that calm happiness. And you'll notice that the even separation of the brain waves generally indicates that calm, happy state. So that was just one thing both Kevin and I discovered. And, and here we're talking about what both our graphs showed as, as we went through and we measured these over more than a thousand different occasions to get a you know, and we were very open getting just a good cross the board assessment of what happened when we tried different cues and what different states arose and then looking at the brain waves that correlated with that, at least for, for those practices we were doing. The second one, very common practice that Kevin and I do, which is to draw energy up 
and the light above the crown. And you notice we've put a high energy state shows this high gamma and or high gamma beta overriding. And so we're, again, through much of this, I'm not saying this is a brainwave state alone. This is often a combination of factors and it often indicates a high energy state. Uh, and certainly we've both found that in the labs that we've been to, we got the same results, that there was certainly a high activated energy state that correlated with this gamma beta increase that shows in some way an effect in the brain. But again, I'm not saying it's, it's actually just the brainwave that's uh, showing this uh, effect. So, so that's a you know, curious distinction. So we're talking about high energy here. The next one, breathing love through the heart. So we, you notice the knitting of those brain waves, that close connection between the delta, theta, and beta brain waves, and they knit together. So they actually look on your graph as if they're sort of playing, playing in and out of each other, interweaving a little bit like a tapestry. And that was when we did a particular focus of breathing love through the heart. So any kind of calm breathing focus, you'll get those knitted bands where the brain waves are really focused and you get a triple middle, as we explained there, of theta, delta, beta. The fourth one, when we get alpha, theta over another band of delta, beta over a lower gamma, when we were going deep down, so as opposed to going high, this high energy state up above the crown, which gave the gamma beta signal, when we drop deep down into this peace and open stillness, we found a different response. Again, we're not saying this is all brain waves, but there is definitely a whole different response in what was recorded by mind monitor showing the Alpha, alpha theta overriding the other brain waves. And then the next one, so now you're looking down the fifth one, the lower left corner. Feeling space, we know, to, so feeling space, generally you, you, there's this spacious awareness and when you feel that space, so this is the felt sensation of space, not necessarily by focusing down or by dropping down or dropping out, but just simply feeling space was alpha overriding and, and that typical relaxed feeling felt sensation of spacious awareness gave us uh, this alpha signature over theta and beta and then delta and gamma. Awareness of awareness, when you really, you turn inwards and you become aware of awareness and then you simply expand out and there's this vastness of the field it's just that beautiful aware it, it feels so spacious and easeful and effortless and that sh showed for both kevin and i in this really clear separation between the brain waves and it actually felt like that right when you're in that awareness of awareness you simply are aware of space space in awareness there's this vast, effortless, spacious awareness. So that showed as the alpha over theta over beta over delta over gamma with very clear separation. And I'll add to that too, that that was kind of a contentless awareness. When there was nothing arising in the space, mm. then the lines tended to separate. And I think that it's, I, I found the actual, you know, analogy of nothing arising and the space between the lines. I remember when we first looked at this, we both looked at each other and thought, oh, it's so obvious, right? In, it in looks many, the way it feels. It yeah. looks the way it feels. It's the same with the gamma, you know, the, it looked the way we felt. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were quite curious that uh, many, many opportunities to see what were happening in our brain were <laughs> reflecting exactly how we felt during the, the practice. Um, so anyway, that was, uh, yeah, it does look how we feel. The next one, calm absorption synchrony, is you can see the, this um, almost lyrical pattern of the theta and delta where they're in synchrony. 
So there were, we noticed that there was a synchrony of waves that occurred both in that graph and in the very last one where all the waves rise together, which was uh, a deep absorption in, at, into transcendence. So the calm absorption is like literally when you're, when you're in this deep absorbed state, the, it's as if you are riding on an ocean. So it's, again, it, it looks how it feels. It it's literally feels like that. And the deep absorption transcendence feels uplifting. And it feels as if the entire you know, body, mind, energy, consciousness is all in, in a symphony and tr transcending and uplifting. So it, it looks how it feels in those last two well, in fact, the last three graphs particularly look look how they feel. So, so if I was to say anything, you know, about the the cues and the states and the brain waves, is the more and more Kevin and I have looked into this, the more and more our graphs have reflected how we feel. We the signature looks like how we feel. So, if it's moving like this, it actually feels like that. And if it's high energy, then it feels like that. And if it's very calm and peaceful, it feels like that. And if there's space and awareness, it feels like this. And if there's this synchrony of deep absorption into transcendence, it literally feels like that. So Kevin, that's a, a little on that. And I hope that's useful for people. And if you would like a copy of this, uh, please reach out to us at raisingourvibration.net or you can email us at raising our vibration you'll find the email on the website so it's probably easiest to go straight there raising our vibration.net and you can e email us directly you'll also find up and coming courses and we have teach training courses and an app and a book there so if you want this chart we're very happy to send it to you and you might find it very useful to look at some of the things that we've got coming up if you're if you're really interested in going deeper into this whole process of understanding wisdom insight unconditional love the power of peace and stillness in your life transcendence so kevin on that note i'm going to pass back to you for some of the sharing okay great and that chart is also in the back of our book, Raising Our Vibration, which is a guide to subtle energy meditation. So I'm going to share my screen now for a moment. And so this is a, a chart of just a 14 minute practice. It's basically um, just a, a breathing, calm, happiness type practice. And so you look at it and if on first glance, you may not see a lot happening here, but I wanted to point out a few moments on this graph to show how just practicing one cue, which is this breathing slowly and deeply and feeling this sense of calm as you breathe in, a sense of happiness as you breathe out, just following one cue for 14 minutes, there's actually a shifting between, a subtle shifting between states following that one cue. So you see at the beginning, it's kind of just looks, um, it looks like a, just a very calm state. And then, but as you go deeper into this feeling of calm, you'll see that very subtly, gamma and beta start to rise a little bit. And you'll also notice that as gamma and beta arise relationship between rising energy in the practice, especially this feeling of happiness that kind of lights you up from the inside. And that's shown by rising gamma and beta waves. And, and then that sense of deep calm, which is more shown by the alpha, theta, delta waves. So as we go along, I want you to see both that rising energy. So that happens right about to the middle of the practice. And then once the energy is just 
really risen then there's just an absorption of letting go into that and notice how alpha theta and delta start to ride together so you can see it there right about 745 they start to kind of mirror each other as we go through and near the end of the practice there's a, a dropping into a really still quiet mind and that's shown by theta going up and touching alpha there and as well as gamma and beta dropping down so just wanted to show you those patterns and then um, in this chart here uh, this if you look at the brain maps down here where it says delta theta alpha you'll see this was showing that moment near the um, end where in the rear sensors so you see the nose at the top of the head in the there's two frontal sensors and then two rear sensors on muse in the rear sensors there's this really strong alpha back here it's kind of that that suppression of the sense of self that happens in the default mode network so there's a suppression effect of alpha and there's a rising of theta in this really still calm part of the practice so just showing you a brain map look at what we saw at the end of the last graph and then going forward um, here's another graph of um, uh, similar uh, breathing calm happiness but in this you can see there's a dropping into it and then there's just this nice riding of the waves this calm absorption that is you can just see in the waves there and this felt like I was just dropping in and floating in the ocean so again you can see how the inner felt sensation is kind of mirrored in the graphs and that nice smooth and easeful flow and that's exactly what it felt like and then moving on this graph is to show these two highly contrasting states so here on the left side you see after a, a short absorption um, in the breathing calm happiness there's an elevation of the energy so this first half of the graph is where the body just feels lit up with energy so much so that the whole space an infinite space alive with energy is and you see this big kind of mountain of energy there and that's what it feels like so it feels like just all of life your whole body the whole space all beings is just lit with energy and then there's a halfway through then i just consciously dropped that sensation let go completely so that there was nothing arising in the mind so again you'll see the alpha theta delta really riding together it's like you're just resting in that sense of awareness with no content arising um, so those are just some examples from my graphs that that correlate with some of the things that Stephen was talking about i'm going to stop the uh, actually, let's keep the screen share for a moment and let's talk about how you can use a guided meditation to really learn to interpret your graph. So if, if there was a guided meditation here, the cues at right about 840 where the energy starts to rise, there may be a cue in the guided meditation that is to feel the energy of your body and then feel that energy expanding into the, so you sense the infinite field of life energy you feel as if the entire space is infinite and lit and bright and open and spacious and so if you are following a guided meditation and you um, go and you look at your graph afterwards you could say oh what was the cue at 840 there something happened there and so if you look at your graph and then go back to the guided meditation scroll over to um, 
two minutes into it and, and listen, okay, what was the cue that happened there that produced this change? And then again, if you go over on this graph to about 850, 851, you could see, oh, there's a real change here. If you scrolled over in the guided meditation, so you could see oh, what was the cue around 11 or 12 minutes and listen to the guided meditation at that point and you say, oh, at that point, there was a, a cue to just drop, let go and rest as open awareness. And so by looking at your graph, going back to the guided meditation, seeing exactly what the cue was at that moment where you see a change in the graph, that can really start to teach you how to read your graphs and what they mean. So if you go from, you know what your cue is, you know how deeply absorbed or how much you were feeling that, and then you see what the graph looks like, you start to make correlations between here's the technique, here's how absorbed I was in that technique, and here's what the graph showed. Or here's a technique, but my mind was just wandering at that moment, and I wasn't absorbed. In fact, I started just thinking about um, something, at a business meeting I had uh, later in the day. And you can say, yeah, I remember that. I kind of just lost track at this moment in the meditation. And you can see that by looking at the cue again in the guided audio. And then you look at your graph and say, oh, that's what mind wandering looks like on my graphs, in my brain, on my graphs. Um, so I'll stop sharing there. And, and maybe that's another important, very important point to make is um, while Stephen and I have shown many similar patterns in our own graphs, the most important thing when you're, you're reading your graph is that your graph has unique signatures. Um, your brain is operating in a unique way. It has unique patterns. And the most important thing is to learn what your patterns are. And you can do that by following a guided meditation, graphing it, knowing what cue you were doing. Were you absorbed in that cue? Oh yeah, at that moment, I remember I was really, I sunk into it. Oh, what does my graph say at that moment? You'll start to recognize um, different of your own personal patterns. And that's the real value of following a guided meditation, but also of using the EEG is not that you're trying to match what somebody else is saying their brain looks like, but that you're learning what your brain is doing with these specific cues. So Stephen, you want to add anything in there? I know a lot of people, uh, you do a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one meditation coaching. And so a lot of people come to you and say, hey, here's my graph. What does it mean? And you have to take them through this whole process of, well, a graph on its own doesn't mean anything. It's, it's what technique were you using? How skilled are you at that technique? What was your felt sense? And then relating that to your graph. Yeah, Kevin, Kevin, thank you. you. You're quite correct. And I was just going to come back to some very basic things about journaling and recording mm -hmm. and it, it is really important right from the beginning that you start to write down immediately afterwards your felt sensations, any particular cues you notice that gave you a, a, a strong experience, for example. Um, and just as Kevin was saying, whether you're more or less absorbed or whether you were distracted, because we quite often do our meditation and we come back to it and look at the graph and say, oh, what was I doing there? Or I think I remember, but you don't, you recall is... is um, blurry especially after one or two sessions later so really i encourage you to really write down after every single meditation even if it's just like shorthand notes of saying here i was absorbed here i was distracted here i felt something here there was an intense energy oh there was more energy you know if you focus on the different energy centers in the body i was feeling more energy in my head more in my heart more in my lower dantian more. so that that is really crucial because when you go back to the guided meditations and you're uh, looking at it and you 
it's easy to get confused if you don't remember whether you were distracted or really focused or absorbed at a particular point. So that's the first thing is really journal, keep, keep regular interest. So Kevin and I used to adopt a habit after every graph with label every graph, you know, high energy, you know, focused here, this just really shorthand so that we knew exactly what each graph referred to. Um, the frequency of recording then becomes really important because you want to be able to look at your different states. So, so even, for example, morning and night, you may notice, and this is a really important point, you might notice the frequency of certain brain waves is actually higher in the morning. So you might feel more energized in the morning and notice that, in fact, gamma and beta do rise more in the morning and that in the evening you get more a delta or, or theta rising, for example. So there's, that we often find at different times of the day that you'll start to notice different signatures arising. And again, if you're recording those, you start to notice some very useful things, but they become part of the, the inside of your practice. So, so doing this, you know, recording it immediately afterwards in, in your journal, looking at the differences between different times of the day and between different meditations. Um, it is, I, I agree with you, Kevin, it's really difficult for people in the beginning because they do tend to, they get the graph, they've forgotten everything else because they've been trying to focus so hard on the practice and then they don't really know what it means. So yeah, so initially the journaling and there is some really uh, crucial help that guided meditations can give you as you go on in your practice. So one of those things is that as you go and, and become more and more adept at your practice, when you start to focus on the cues in your guided meditation, you can actually use those cues without the guided meditation to cue yourself and start to develop uh, a, a deepening of your own practice. By, so you've, you've been through this process, you've journaled it, You've looked back at the way that the guided meditation cues, you, you've looked back at your experience, and then you can try them for yourself. You can do a short meditation where you do something really simple, like what if I give myself the cue of just as Kevin was doing there, of breathing in calmness, breathing out happiness. So you cue yourself and see what, what a difference, for example, there is between you cueing yourself and the guided meditations giving you that cue. And you can learn something very interesting about your brainwaves. So you can learn, oh, okay, I easily get distracted when I'm guiding myself. I can do it for a few moments, but then I kind of lose sight. And then you can also see, if you're recording that carefully, you can see how there's a different, you can compare the, the guided one and you can compare, compare the self-guided one and you actually learn something about your own inner states and your own abilities around um, self-guiding and around developing your own practice. So those, those sort of simple things are, are very, very useful. Uh, the, the cue, I can't reinforce enough in the beginning how important guided meditations can be to just helping you to identify where shifts occur in your practice, what as, exactly as Kevin said, what your individual signature looks like. So ideally, you, you don't want to be comparing them with somebody else, but you want to be looking at the, you, for example, if you do a calm happiness meditation, and then you do a really active meditation, and then you do a really one-pointed focused meditation, like focusing right on the tip of your nose, then you can notice some of the sub, subtle differences between even different focal points or different focused uh, states or, or techniques. So these all become really crucial in, in your practice to learn what works for you. And so there's another whole area that you've, you know, you, you'll find you might do dozens of different uh, practices. And if you've carefully journaled them, you might start to notice patterns. Oh, every time I do a calm happiness meditation, I simply drop into the practice and I, I look at this all the way through my journal recordings. I'm showing, oh, easeful feeling. Oh, very relaxed. 
And when you might find another meditation style, you, you're kind of trying, you're trying to, to achieve something or it's sort of a little bit more goal oriented because you're not so comfortable. So these can really be incredibly um, informative about your own practice, just as Kevin was saying about the, the, the practice that suits, suits you, especially in the beginning and, the, and your types of signatures, the way that they are shown. So Kevin, back to you on, on anything else, but just simple things, journal, comp compare your own ones, you know, look at the differences between different times of the day. So, so, so I, do, I do remember quite often people would say, oh, I did the same practice, but it doesn't look anything the same in the, <laughs> in the morning and in the evening. And so that is quite normal as you start out, quite normal to have some discrepancies depending on the time of day depending on the conditions even your environment consider your environment if you're doing it in a noisy space but and you're hoping to dive deep it might be might it might be well to consider oh okay i need to shift places the comfort of your seat all kinds of things like this you start to look at them really closely so do experiment right experiment with the way you sit your posture the posture cues the Simple things like your environment, the noises, the distractions, and so on. Yeah, so those are great points. And just even with morning and evening, your cortisol levels are higher in the morning. So that's a good time to take advantage of that and do energizing practices and practices that wake up your mind and alertness and and your and also energizing practices tend to really connect you to feeling the energy in the world, which is appropriate for going out in the world and interacting. Whereas at night, more stillness and calm practices will correlate with what your hormones are doing at that time and get you ready for sleep. And one thing that really uh, occurred to me as you were talking, Stephen, was this um, really taking time after your meditation. So as you said, journaling, but then also looking at the graph, comparing with the journal so that right while the experience is really fresh, you are taking time to reflect on it, gain insight about it, rather than oh, I'm just sit, sitting down, meditate. Okay, ding, I'm done. And now I rush out into the day. You're not going to, you may have had a nice experience, but you're going to quickly forget it, number one. And it's not going to be as transformative as if you allow yourself significant time after your practice to make detailed journaling notes, look at your graphs, make comparisons, really look at it as a learning time. And before you go off into your day, that helps to integrate the experience, you learn from it, and you also learn how your mind is working so that you're much more aware as you go off and, and move into your day. So. Uh, thank you, Stephen, and thank you all for watching. I hope you found um, some helpful tips as you use guided meditations, use EEG, and really tune into your inner felt experience and start to make those correlations for yourself. So thank you all for joining, and thank you, Stephen. Thank you for your practice. <laughs>